Ramadan is just two weeks away and I'm sure many of you must have already started meal prepping. This video contains 10 meal prep ideas that would make cooking a lot easier during the holy month. Sweet coconut filling is a staple during Ramadan for us, so I thought of making that first. To make this, add sugar and water to a saucepan. Let the sugar dissolve completely by stirring on high heat. Once dissolved, reduce heat to low and let it simmer for 5 minutes. Then add in the coconut and stir well. Let the water evaporate completely. Another pan add ghee and once it melts, add in cashew nuts. If you like, you can add raisins as well. Once the color of the cashew nuts change into golden, take it off the flame and add the cashew nuts into the uh, coconut mixture along with the ghee. Then add a teaspoon of cardamom powder and if you like the smell of it, add a teaspoon of rose water as well. The filling is ready. I'm planning to freeze this and use it later during Ramadan. Another thing that we use a lot during Ramadan is sugar syrup. We love uh, desserts, especially Arabic desserts, so we always have to uh, have a batch of sugar syrup ready. To make this, I'm adding 3 cups of sugar and uh, one and a half cups of water and let the uh, sugar dissolve completely in the water. Then I uh, reduce the heat to low and let it simmer for 5 minutes. Then pour in a tablespoon of lemon juice and add a rose syrup and your sugar syrup is ready. If you're planning to use this as a sweetener in juices, you don't have to add the rose syrup. Uh, you can add rose syrup later on when you're using it to sweeten your Arabic desserts. This can be stored in a glass container for up to one month at room temperature. I mostly have the problem of uh, tomatoes going bad in the fridge and having to throw it most of the time. So I thought I'll make a big batch of tomato puree and uh, freeze it so that I can use it later on easily when making gravies. I blended the tomatoes in a blender and added it into a pot and uh, cooked it on high flame until the water got evaporated. Once the water was evaporated, I added oil, I added coconut oil here and then I cooked it further for about half an hour until it got reduced and thickened. Then I'll store this in ice cube trays in the freezer. To make storage more easier, I am going to store the tomato cubes in Ziploc bag. Chicken puffs are always a favorite during iftar over here. So I thought I'll make that and freeze it because puff pastry freezes very well. And uh, once you freeze the puff pastry and uh, bake it, it turns out super flaky and crispy. I had a very delicious chicken, prawn and cheese filling which I had uh, made for my previous video. Uh, so I pulled that out from the freezer and I just filled the puff pastry with it along with a slice of pickled jalapeno. I'll post the link for this filling recipe in the description box below. This pastry crimper is a lifesaver. I always pull it out during Ramadan and I use it so much. I got it from Ace Hardware again. That's my favorite place you all might have understood by now. I'll try to find the link for it in Amazon and uh, post it again in the description box below. I had a chicken and corn filling again from my last video. So I thought I'll use that to make chicken wraps in tortillas. And uh, I'll just uh, add uh, the chicken filling and uh, jalapeno, sriracha, chili mayo, some uh, mozzarella cheese and close the wrap and uh, wrap it very well in cling wrap first and then place it in a Ziploc bag and I'll freeze it. When I want to make this, I'll pull it out and thaw it completely and uh, then I'll uh, just uh, toast both sides in butter and serve. I had let the chicken puff freeze individually in the freezer. Now that it's done, I'll uh, uh, store everything in a Ziploc bag. Since we're planning to make our uh, sun fast this uh, Ramadan, inshallah, 
I thought I'll make something that would be interesting for him. So I'm going to make this hot dog dinner roll. For that, I'm going to make the bread first. It's very easy to make the bread for this. All you have to do is add every ingredient in the bowl. And if you're having sand mixer, just run it uh, for eight minutes or you can just uh, knead it by hand also easily for eight to 10 minutes until you get a soft sticky dough. Transfer the dough into an oiled bowl and let it rise in a warm place for about two hours. Meanwhile, I'm going to make the hot dog filling. If you don't like hot dog, you can make any filling that you like. Uh, so for the hot dog filling, I'm going to saute onion and garlic until the onions turn soft and translucent. Then I'll add the sliced hot dog into it and cook for about five minutes. Then I added red chili flake, paprika powder, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper. I then cooked everything for about a minute and then I poured uh, cooking cream into it and uh, two tablespoons of cream cheese. And I mixed everything until I got a creamy consistency. For more flavor, I added half chicken stock cube. And then I finished it off with uh, chopped parsley. The dough was still rising, so I got on to making mutton kebabs. To make this uh, to minced meat, I added onion, tomatoes, green chilies, crushed coriander seeds, ginger garlic paste, red chili flakes, turmeric powder, cumin powder, garam masala powder and a tablespoon of ghee and also uh, uh, coriander leaves. You can also add parsley leaves. Then I added one egg and uh, half a teaspoon of baking soda and uh, for binding I added gram flour. Mixed everything very well and I made it into the small kofta kind of uh, shape uh, with half the uh, minced meat and with half of it I made uh, round mini burger type uh, patties also. Since I wanted to prepare something that would be fit for Suhoor, I made this homemade granola. To make this you have to add the almonds, rolled oats, chia seeds, cinnamon, brown sugar, pumpkin seeds, walnut, all of these things into a bowl and mix well together. Then in a saucepan, heat uh, honey or maple syrup and coconut oil until it comes to a boil. Take it off the flame and add vanilla essence and pour this into the oats mixture. Mix thoroughly so that the oats get coated entirely with the honey and oil mixture. Spread it on a lined baking sheet and uh, bake it at uh, 150 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. In my first attempt, the entire granola got burned. That is because I baked it for 30 minutes and the temperature was a little high, I think at around 80. So I made this granola again the next day and I made sure that the oven temperature was lower and I kept checking to see if it was getting burned and I got the perfect uh, texture and the perfect color. When we eat this granola with the milk, uh, the milk gets a nice toasty uh, caramel flavor and I really like that a lot. The kebabs are individually frozen so I'm putting that in a Ziploc bag. The dough has risen completely. I'm going to divide it into 10 balls and uh, you can see how I'm making the dinner rolls in the coming clips. When you're assembling the dinner rolls in the pan, make sure that you don't overcrowd it or else the buns will not get cooked well. 
next i'm going to squeeze out lemon juice and uh, i'm going to freeze it so that i can use it later while making uh, lemonade or uh, add in salads or in my curries etc without having to cut and squeeze the lemon whenever i need it I'd let the buns rise for half an hour. I'll brush it with egg wash and bake it for uh, 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius oven. The night before I plan to serve the rolls, I'll remove it from the freezer and thaw it at room temperature. Then I'll reheat it in a warm oven and then serve. The last thing I did was I chopped a lot of onions and uh, sauteed it until it turned very soft and I froze it in ice cube trays. The one thing that I hate while cooking is chopping onions and sauteing it. So once that is done, uh, curry will be ready within minutes because I have uh, sauteed onions ready. I have ginger garlic paste ready in the fridge and I have tomatoes also. So all I have to do is add the onion cube and the ginger garlic paste and tomatoes in a pan. Add whatever seasoning I want into it and add the meat and cook it. So as simple as that. Like this, I can save a lot of time in the kitchen, inshallah. That's all in this video. Hope these tips are useful and helpful for you. And uh, hope you can save a lot of time in the kitchen during Ramadan because of this. If you like this video, please do like, comment and share with your family and friends. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching.